Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so I started recording this video yesterday and my laptop died halfway through. So we're trying again. <laughs> All right. So we're going to pick up where we left off on the core beliefs of Hinduism. Yesterday, or in the last video, we talked about Atman, which is belief in the soul, that everything has a soul um, and that we are all part of the supreme soul. And then we also talked about reincarnation, um, how when a person dies, their soul is reborn um, into something else, either another, another person or maybe an animal or something, depending on the life that they lived. Um, so people who lived good lives would have, would reincar reincarnate into something better. Someone who lived a bad life would reincarnate into something um, not as good. So we're going to talk about karma today. Um, so karma is a person's behavior in life, kind of the what goes around comes around, how you act. Um, and karma plays a big part in reincarnation. And I'm going to explain why here in a minute. So karma is how you behave in your, in your life. Hindus believe that people who lived a good life or who had a good karma would be reborn into a higher caste or a social class. Here in a minute, we're going to talk about the caste system. And the caste system is a big part of Indian history. Um, and normally we would spend a lot more time on it um, if we were looking at the Indus River Valley. But since we're not looking at that and just looking at Hinduism, we're going to just kind of briefly go over it here in a little bit. Um, but Hindus believe that people who lived a good life, who had a good karma, would be reincarnated into a higher social class or a higher caste. Um, while those people who lived a bad life would be reborn into a lower caste. Um, so if you had a bad karma, if you had lived life immorally, did things you shouldn't have done, um, didn't ask for forgiveness, those kinds of things, you would be reborn into a lower caste. Um, and it's not something that, according to Hindus, that you would have wanted to do um, because of the huge prejudice that came with the different social classes. But we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, so karma is tied very closely to reincarnation. Oh, I don't know what happened to my my um, my thingies here. Normally I have like little black things. I don't know where they went. Um, so the next and the, the last um, piece of these key beliefs here that we're going to talk about is dharma. Uh, so dharma is a code of living. And it's not like a code, like it's written down anywhere or anything. It's just kind of a way that you live, a tradition that emphasizes good conduct and morality. Um, so we talked about one of the Hindu gods, I think it was Devi, um, who protects the Dharma, who fights to keep Dharma, that keeps that code of living, um, and would stand, stand up against people who go against the Dharma. So it's this code of living that emphasizes good conduct and morality. Um, you were encouraged to live um, by the Dharma, to live by this code, to do what was expected of you and things like that. It all kind of ties into Dharma. <clears throat> so these key beliefs kind of all tie into this caste system. Now this caste system is a very big deal, um, or it was for a very long time in India, and it is still very much alive today, but not quite in the same way. Um, so the Hinduism, Hindu caste system is a social hierarchy, which means it's a level of social classes. Kind of like when we studied it um, in Mesopotamia and in China most recently, we talked about the different social classes in China. Well, Hinduism has social classes as well. It's a social hierarchy in India that divides Hindus based on their karma, and their dharma. So it's kind of based, and you were born into your caste, and you did not move castes. That's why reincarnation and karma were so important. If you had a good karma, hopefully you would reincarnate into a higher caste, because you didn't get out of your caste at all. Um, this caste system was um, so um, rigid, I guess is the word I want to use. It was so strict that you weren't even allowed to marry outside of your own caste system. And still today, there are some rural areas of India where it's looked down upon to marry outside of your caste. It's kind of, it's taboo. It's forbidden. You don't do it. Um, this caste system is illegal today. Um, it was a big part of India, but it is illegal today. But there is still kind of some prejudice that come with it. Um, and that... Unfortunately, that's not something that just kind of goes away 
overnight. It's been, um, I don't know, it's the caste system was officially abolished, I think, in like 1950s. So it's been 60, 70 years, and it's still a part of Hindu and Indian culture. Um, so let's talk about these four uh, castes. And I have my little cheat sheet here. I like wrote down how to say them. So hopefully I say them right. Um, so the first one is the Brahmin. And the Brahmin are the intellectual and spiritual leaders. This would be like your scholars, your um, priests, your religious leaders. Um, they'd be your people who had the most access to education, your highest class, had the most money, um, would fall into the Brahmin. So the next one that we have is a Kshatriya, which looks funny because it has a K in it, but it's pronounced Kshatriya. The Kshatriya were the protectors and public servants. So these are going to be like your military, your um, police officers, those who worked for the government um, would fall into the Kshatriya group. Um, the people who protect society or public servants, things like that. Um, the Vazia, Vazias were the skillful producers. So these would be your people who worked in a trade. Um, they maybe were responsible, they were like your business owners, um, your craftsmen, things like that would fall into the Vazias. Um, they were your skillful producers, those who um, made things and provided things for the community or the culture. And then we have the Sudras. The Sudras were the unskilled laborers. So they would be like, um, I don't, I would think that farmers would probably fall into this category, um, where they kind of worked in the land. Um, this would maybe be people who like didn't own businesses for, but worked for those businesses. Um, things along those lines. So you kind of your labors that don't need to have like a specific skill associated with them. So we have those four social classes. Um, and like I said, it was forbidden for you to, you couldn't move out of your social class. Um, you couldn't marry out of your social class. The only way you left your social class was to be reincarnated. Now there's actually a fifth level to this that is completely outside of this hierarchy. Like it's not even a part, like if you were to draw a pyramid, your pyramid here would have four levels and then there'd be a fifth level that's like not even attached to the end of the pyramid. That's how completely out of the um, social hierarchy that this group is. So below all of these classes, castes were a group known as the untouchables, who were considered the lowest level of society. Um, they're, today they're called the Dalits, um, but these untouchables were like you didn't, the level of... Um, disgust that came for these that came were directed towards these people I should say was so high um there's reports of in of untouchables being beaten um because their shadow happened to fall upon someone of a higher class cast um they would do the most un or the most unwanted jobs um so maybe they would be the ones that cleaned up the cow poop in the streets um, they were completely, like, you didn't acknowledge their presence. They weren't allowed to um, hold any kinds of positions. They were lived in total poverty, um, the very lowest level. So like I said, the caste system is banned in India today because of its discrimination. Um, it actively discriminates against people in different castes. So obviously it's banned today, but some of the traditions are still loosely followed. Some of them, especially in certain different parts of India, some of these traditions are still held. Um, for example, marrying in, within your caste. You were expected to marry with someone within the same caste as you. You couldn't marry someone in a higher or lower uh, caste. So that's still um, a part of Indian culture today as well. So here's a picture of what that would look like. So we have the priests, the academic class. So we have the rulers, administrators, and the warriors. Oh, I guess the farmers do fall... Um, and the Vizias. So the farmers would be in that third class and then the manual laborers, those who maybe worked in the fields themselves actually would be in that next one. And the street cleaners, the manual tasks would be the Dalits. 
I do have a video on your checklist if you want to watch. It talks about the caste system in India and how it's still alive today. Um, a couple more things, and we're going to go through these kind of quickly, so you may need to pause the video um, to get everything, because um, I'm going to kind of move a little bit quicker so we don't go too much over, like, 13 minutes here. Food is a very important part of Hindu life. Um, most Hindus don't eat beef or pork um, and actually become vegetarians. Um, cows are considered sacred in Hinduism. I'm not completely sure why. If you want to know, you can look it up. Um, but obviously beef comes from cows, and so they won't eat beef. They won't eat pork. Um, they would become vegetarians. Food is very important to Hindus. They also believe in the purification, or believe in purification usually with water. So that water, certain bodies of water would have like purification properties. The Ganges River, for example, which is in India, is considered sacred to many um, and has the power to wash away sins. So the Ganges River um, is very important. It's a very big river in India. Um, it's one of the main rivers in India. Um, and it's considered sacred by many. They may go to the Ganges River and wash themselves in the river as a way of purifying themselves from their sins. Again, um, just kind of part of Hindu culture. Not all Hindus believe that because different Hindu Hindus believe different things. Um, worship for Hindus um, takes place in a temple or in a shrine in their own homes. Um, so it's very common for worship to take place in homes instead of temples, especially if you live in certain areas of India. Um, Hindus would create a shrine dedicated to their chosen god or goddess. Um, now we listed a few gods and goddesses. I've been told before that there are hundreds of gods in Hinduism because each home has their own god and sometimes their god is different than another god. And So I don't know that for sure. It's just something that I have been told in the past. Um, but there is a shrine, almost always there is a shrine in a Hindu home that's dedicated to their chosen god or goddess. Um, and so you have a picture here of what that might look like. So this is the end of where we're going to stop today with core beliefs. Um, when we pick up in our next video, we're going to look at Hinduism today, but we're going to stop here. Um, you do have a news ELA article on the caste system, so you want to go ahead and do that. Miss Herlis is going to record herself reading it, so you can um, listen to that, or you can read it on your own and answer those questions. We are nearing the end of content here, guys, so really make sure you're buckling down, you're focusing in, and you're getting that stuff done. If you have any questions, you know how to get a hold of us, so I will let you guys go. Good luck.